We are back uh, with List View Radio. That's 87 List View on your FM dial. So I'm going to talk about a custom List View adapter here. So things are going to get a little bit more complicated. So let's start with something that's not complicated. So this class is a string and a boolean. So it's sort of annoying we have to move into its own file, but that's a little bit of a Java thing. We just want to name it a boolean. And then we want that in a data structure. And the way we're doing it here is, you know, it's, it's an idiom that's worth knowing. So, you know, we've got a normal class here that's a, an activity. But in here, we've got a static final list. So this is a read-only list, but it's not a primitive type. And so in order to initialize this final list, what we're doing is we have this sort of weird looking thing, if you haven't seen it before, a static block of code that's going to execute before any of the constructors. and here we've got a, a list that we're actually defining to be an array list, and we're adding to that array list, and we're newing up these objects, and they're just strings and booleans. So and then at the end, uh, we're doing an unmodifiable list from our array list and assigning it to names and ratings, which is this final list. So static block, initializing a static final uh, member variable. So neat if you haven't seen it before, but but totally irrelevant actually to to list views. Okay, so let's let's take a look. I'm not going to show you the uh, activity main. It's the same activity main as in the basic example. Or right, I'll show it to you quickly. Uh, the the important part is there's a list view in here. That's the only thing you really need to know. So that's why I didn't show it to you before. Okay. So what are we doing in onCreate? Blah blah blah. Right. You know this is the point of repetition and programming is to get you to the point where a lot of these things are second nature. So on create, we call super on create, we call set content view, it's the activity main, we initialize our toolbar, uh, we do a lot of the same things we did in the previous initialization, not, not that important, you can look it up if you're interested. Okay, now here we did an array adapter, which was a built-in class before. And now what we're doing is we've got our own custom list view adapter. Code is right there. Of course, it's going to inherit from array adapter. Spoiler alert. But, you know, we're newing up that thing. And then past that, this, this code is going to look remarkably similar to our previous code. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our initial contents, this name and ratings. So we'll add that to the adapter. Then we're going to get a hold of our list view using find view by ID. And we're going to set that list view to the adapter. And then we're going to set an on click listener. Whoops. And the on click listener is just going to do the same thing. You selected this item. So, and in this case, when you get the item of position, it's a, a name and rating. And so then we're just getting the name. We're not getting getting the rating. I'm putting that in a text. Uh, putting that in a toast. <laughs> toast is sort of like a, a text to your user. Okay, and then there's some stuff about setting up the menu and uh, menu stuff and the next demo. But this this code, y you should see this, and you can compare it to what's in main activity. Um, you know this. This says array adapter, but you know we're doing the five view ID, we're doing the set adapter. Um, it's 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 all very similar. I mean, here we we sort of initialize it with this this uh, array, and so you know here we don't initialize it with this array, but we do this at all. That's a, a fairly minor difference. Okay, so that that's actually promising, because you're going to see that when we run this, what we get is this thing. 
Whoa, what? This doesn't look like the other one. This looks like it's got big text and these weird pictures. So where did this all come from? Well, that's the magic of the custom list view adapter. So our custom list view adapter extends array adapter. So we're gonna rely on a lot of the built-in stuff, but we're gonna do a couple of things here that are interesting and a little confusing. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna grab a context that was passed into us. And we're gonna do this thing, we haven't um, looked at that much. We're grabbing an inflator object. And this inflator object is what takes a piece of XML and turns it into a, a view object and actually puts it on the screen. So we're gonna need an inflator. Now, you might sort of be thinking ahead like, why would a custom list view adapter need an inflator? What kind of view is it going to inflate? Hint, it's not a view that takes up the entire screen. Okay, so we're push that on the stack. Get back to that function in a minute. All right. The, the, there are only three functions in, in, this, in, in this class, so it's not too bad. So we're gonna look at bind view last. Next thing we're gonna look at is get view because get view is the main um, function that is responsible for creating the rows in the list. And that's why we're customizing this code is because we want to, the row to look uh, like we want it to look. Okay, so what we're getting passed in in get view is a position, which is gonna be the, the position in the data structure. This convert view thing and we're gonna talk a bunch about that. And then this parent, which you don't have to deal with too much. Uh, you, you just have to sort of pass it along. Okay, and then I've, I've done this somewhat weird thing. I've, I've included two different, both correct implementations, one of which is an optimized version of the other. So let's start at, with case zero. And what we're doing in case zero, and the, the whole point of this get view is, I need to create a view that represents a row in my list view. So how am I gonna do that? I've got this inflator. This inflator takes a piece of XML and it can turn it into a view object using the inflate method. So all I need to look at is this pick text row thing. So pick text row is XML layout for a row. It's pretty simple. How would you lay out a row? You got your linear layout right here. It's horizontal. It matches our parent. I've got an image view. I call this the pick text row pick. This is the pick text row text. Wrapping some content. It's got some margin. Text view has text size. Got some padding. You know all the stuff that you know as far as layout goes, but it's being used in the context of a list view, and that's what's new, and that's what's custom. We've got our custom layout for a single row, and we're using that custom layout for a single row here in the adapter by inflating it. You have to pass along this parent, you know, and you can imagine it's, you know, it's a row, but it's, it's in a whole screen layout and that's what the parent is for and then this attached to root thing is false okay so that's this is the this is the first part is inflating this and then we need to sort of bind the view and you can imagine the the binding view is gonna um, set the actual picture and the actual text view All right and so let's let's look what what bind view does so we've got a position and we've got our view so we want to get our name and rating object, which we're getting from the position. And get item is actually a function that's provided by the array adapter. So that's in the, the view of the array that understands all of the positions. So it's basically just saying like, you know, get me the 10th item in my array. That's a name and rating object. Now within this view, and remember this view is a row, 
I want to find view by ID, my pick text row text, and later on I'm going to do my pick text row pick, but find me the text view in this row. That's all this is doing. The text view in this row is identified by this identifier. <laughs> A little circular, but it's true. Okay, so the text view, and then we're setting the text to whatever we got for this name and rating, the name part of it. That's it. And what are we doing for the for the view? We're setting the image resource to either, um, and, and this is pretty cool, when we're doing these vector, you can see a preview you, we're either setting it to this green happy face or this red sad face. And that is exactly what we saw here. Red sad face, the Grateful Dead. Eh, it's, I mean, it's not a terrible album. It's, it's not great. You know, Working Man's Dead, everybody likes. All right. And so this is our pick text row view, uh, row. And, and that's the, uh, that's the text part of it. And that is the uh, image part of it. Okay, so when we bind the view, we're finding the object in this position, and we're taking the text, and we're putting it in the text, and we're finding the uh, Boolean, and then we're setting the uh, image based on the Boolean. Okay, and the only other thing to sort of, um, you know, that, that uh, makes us functionally complete. But the thing about text views, they're used all over the place and they actually are performance critical. Because they're performance critical, we're gonna talk about several ways to optimize their performance that are super important. And here's the, the first optimization that we're gonna do. There are two things that are going on here that are expensive. The first is we're inflating this view every time we call get view. And then the second one is in this bind, function we're calling find view by ID, which is uh, expensive. But this, fir this first one's a killer. So inflating XML, as you might imagine, this is expensive. XML is just the specification, and this view is this, um, you know, a bunch of Java objects, and they, they fit into a parent view. So there's a lot of work going on here. And we don't have to do this work every time. So this convert view, when the, the system, when it passes in null for the convert view, it doesn't have any sort of view for this row. So this is like when it's initializing. And when it doesn't have any view for this row, we need to inflate it. But once we've inflated, you know, nine rows or however many rows fit on the screen, it will pass us the old convert view, which we can just write over. We don't need to inflate it again, right? This is again, like you can only see nine of these rows, but there are a million rows in the data structure because you can only see nine. We've only got nine view objects for rows and we're going to reuse them. Okay. We're not going to inflate a million view objects for a million, uh, uh, entries in our in our array. We only ever see nine of them, and so we are only ever going to inflate nine convert view objects. If we've already inflated it, we will just rebind it. What does that mean? Rebind it means uh, I already have this view. I'm going to overwrite the text view part of it. I'm going to overwrite the image view part of it. That's it. You know, so this says wake of the flood and this says reckoning. All right, now that wake of, that wake of the flood object is gonna be reused maybe here and it says in the dark. In the dark and wake of the flood are never on the screen at the same time. And so I can use this view object and I can put it in here I don't like in the dark. I know it's a, it's a big hit for them and stuff, but whatever. I mean, my brother Esau, that's, that's not a great song. Um, sorry, the, this view object and say, you know, this view object could be the same view object just with different data in it. 
Okay, we have a single long list of all the albums, but only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them are on screen at once, or you know, maybe eight, nine, and that's it. So we only have nine view objects and we reuse them. Okay, I hope that's come across and there are no alarms at the end of this video, which is great and confusing if you hadn't just watched the previous video, which ended in an alarm. Bye-bye.